praise the Lord praise master Jesus hallelujah praise God forever and ever hallelujah praise God hallelujah praise God hallelujah la da la basson toro bocanda praise God praise God praise God praise God hallelujah praise God hallelujah hallelujah Praise God, hallelujah, praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for another great day, another wonderful day that you, O oh God, has made. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, Master Jesus. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. I said the Lord is good all the time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me glorify Master Jesus. Help me to glorify Master Jesus. He is good. He is good. His mercies endure it forever. Our God is good. Our God is good. He's a good God. He's always doing great things. Always doing wonderful things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me worship the Almighty God at where you are. He's a glorious God. He's a faithful God. Our God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God, for your glory today, for your presence. Even among us today, you are a great God. You are a mighty God. We honor your holy name. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. There is none like you in all the heavens, in all the earth. Hallelujah. I welcome you to church today in Jesus' name. Father God of heaven, because you are our Lord, you are our God, I give you all praise. I give you all glory. I give you all honor. All power, all majesty belongs to you, almighty God. Father, I thank you because from age to age you are God. And I thank you because this is the day that you have made and we are glad to be before you. Thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. I ask you to bless us today by your words in the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. Amen. Please tell with me, let us pray. Tell with me in your Bibles to Psalm 95. The Almighty God deserves our praises. It deserves all our thanksgiving. The Bible says, for he is our God, and we are the sheep of his pastures. Let's give him praise, Psalm 95, We shall read very quickly from verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Verse 3. It says, For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. Brethren, you will agree with me that your mighty God deserves your thanksgiving. He deserves my thanksgiving because he is the rock of my salvation. The Bible says we should give him a joyful noise. Hallelujah. He said we should come before his presence with thanksgiving. And I want you to understand, not only with thanksgiving, with a joyful noise before this Almighty God. Why are we starting this service recognizing the Almighty God and thanking Him? Because He's our Maker. He has allowed you to see the beginning of the year, uh, even the beginning of February, and you are seeing the last Sunday of the month of February. I think the Almighty God deserves my praise. I'm sure He deserves your praise also. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, many things may not have gone the way you want it to go, but God still deserves our praise. Because the Bible says, in all things, give thanks unto the Lord. Things may not have gone the way you planned it. Things may not be working for you the way you planned it, but still, give thanks to the Almighty God. Come before Him with thanksgiving. Because he's the Lord of our lives. He's the God that has plans to upgrade our lives. He's the God that has kept you alive. Uh, is it not because you are alive that you can say, I want this, I want that? Or is it not because you are in good health or you are alive? You see your children, you see your husband. Things are working for you. You have a career. Uh, you have not played. They are not passing through, through your nose. Is that not the reason why you are saying you want to go on holiday? You want the coronavirus to go? 
God deserves your praise in the of thanksgiving. Why don't you just go ahead, beloved, and just say, Father, I am grateful that I'm alive today. Almighty God, I am thankful to you because all that I am, all that I will ever be, you are the source of it. You are the owner of my life. You are the source of my life. You are the reason I'm alive today. You are the owner of my life. You are the God of my life. You are the one that formed me. You are the one that kept me alive. The psalmist says, I lay me down. I await for the Lord sustain me. Is it not because the Lord has allowed you to wake this morning that you are alive? Is it not because this God is the owner of your soul? He is the keeper and the one that has preserved you from all evil wind that is blowing, from all the plans of your adversaries against you. Uh, do you do know the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. Do you know the many afflictions the Almighty God has delivered you from? Do you know the mighty battles that the Almighty God has fought on your behalf and given you the victory even before you fought the battles? Do you know the battles that the Lord right now as we are ministering is fighting on your behalf? Do you know the good thoughts, the good plans that this God has for you? That is the reason why I serve him. Nobody loves me like this God. My father, my mother can never love me. Your father, your mother, your husband, your wife can never love you the way this God loves you. Because nobody can die for you. Nobody can sacrifice their life for you. And so, Father, I am grateful to you today. Father, Lord, accept my gratitude, O oh God. Lord God, accept my thanksgiving that you have spared my life, spared my household, spared my wife, spared my children, spared my family, my close family, my extended family, even your church, you have preserved us. You have not permitted any evil wind. You have not permitted the plans of the enemy to prevail over me, over your household, over your church, over my family. Father, rather, you have given us peace, you have given us victory. I am grateful to you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Accept our thanks this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Almighty God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome you to church again today in the name of Jesus. It's a glorious day. Today is the 20th day of February. It's the last Sunday of the month of February. By the time I speak to you next, we are going to be in March. A new month. We are going to be marching forward in the might of the Almighty God. But right now, today, I'm going to preach on a subject I have entitled, Do You Love Me? Can somebody say that with me? Do you love me? Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, if you think about it, beloved, you know, we have just finished Valentine's Day. You know, this is the month where lovers, February 14th, was the day where people were confessing their love to one another. Oh, my darling, my sweetheart, my sugar pie, my only pie, my sweetie pie, my only heartbeat, my heartbeat, my other half, my better half, all manner of uh, descriptions. You know, for their better half. You know, this is the time we have just finished that. This a few weeks ago, we were saying that some people are still basking in the euphoria. Some people are still basking in the jubilation, in the celebration of a single day. You know, many couples, many lovers, you know, they have made strong commitments, you know, to themselves. You know, some even receive special gifts, special presents. You know, uh, is it cars, is it money, uh, or special gifts, you know, you know. You know, these special gifts, they do not have to ask their partners for it. Their partners, because their partners, their better half, their sugar pies, their honey pies, their loved ones, because their loved ones loved them, their loved one gave it to them willingly. And that is what will happen to somebody you love. You will give something willingly to somebody you love. Meanwhile, some couples, for one reason or another, you know, have to ask their other half. I, they have to ask their sweetie pie. They have to ask their, their, their lovers and ask the question, do you love me? Now today, I perceive that the Lord is asking you and I. The Almighty God is asking you and I. He is asking you to search your heart. The same question the Almighty God is saying, my dear son, my dear daughter, do you love me? Hallelujah to Jesus. The Almighty God is asking somebody right now, do you love me? Hallelujah to Jesus. And to show the Almighty God that you love him, I will share some things with you to, to show you whether or not you truly love this God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, if you turn with me to uh, John chapter 21, praise the Lord. John chapter 21, amen. John chapter 21, turn with me to John chapter 21. I'm going to read... Uh, a very quick scripture to you there. Hallelujah. If you are there, just say amen. 
Look at John 21. The Bible says, if you look at verse uh, number, praise God, the, the first verse, verse 1, the word of God says, after these things, uh, you should ask the question, what things? It says, after these things, because this is the basis on which, you know, the, the word of God that I will share with you, that you will be seen about the love of Jesus Christ, about the love of God, about why God is asking or why Jesus is asking, do you love me? He says, after these things, and then you ask what things. So if you pay attention to the preceding chapter, that is chapter 20 in John, you will observe, number one, you will observe that Mary Magdalene saw Jesus. Jesus appeared to her. Amen. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene after he rose from the dead. Number two thing you will see in that chapter 20 of John is that Jesus had appeared to the disciples and he said unto them, Peace unto you. Jesus appeared to the disciples. Number three thing you will see there is the word. Jesus Christ showed them his hands and he showed them his side that had been pierced. He showed them his hand. That the nail has gone through to prove to them that he is Jesus, the risen Lord. And the piercing on his side that they recognized. Number four thing that happened there is that what? He gave them a mandate. Pay attention. After appearing to Mary Magdalene, after appearing to the disciples, after showing them his pierced hands, after showing them his pierced sides and the hole in his hand, he gave them a mandate. The mandate was a reminder and said to them, As my father has sent me, even so saying, I, you, I am sending you in the same way my father has sent me. My father sent me for the purpose, with a mission, and I am sending you in the same manner. And then to ensure that, the, you know, that they can fulfill this mandate, what happened? He gave them an enablement. He empowered them to be able to do the work of reaching others. To be able to do the work as he was able to do it by blowing upon them. He blew upon the disciples and he said, receive the Holy Ghost. And by the breath of the Almighty God, I say to you that is listening to me, watching me this morning, this afternoon, this evening. <sighs> receive the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to be able to do the things that you are not able to do in this month, in the previous month, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, you will observe, if you go back, you will see that despite the encounters that they have with Jesus Christ, despite the very clear assignment that Jesus has given for them to go out and make disciples of all nations, that he has said that as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And after he has anointed them by the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to fulfill that assignment, because the anointing was for a purpose, he blew upon them. He said, receive the Holy Ghost for emp empowerment, to be able to make impact, to be able to do uh, advance the gospel, enlarge the kingdom of God, and reach many people. Uh, you will observe, you know, our brother, brother Peter, after all of these experiences, he decided to use his own anointing for fishing. He decided to use his own, the empowerment that he received. He went fishing. If you look in John chapter number 21, if you look in verse 3, he said to the, his other colleagues, he says, I go fishing. And because as the leader, he was seen as the head, the others, they followed him as well. That is what the Bible says in uh, John chapter 21. If you look in verse 3, he also, he said he was going to fish. All of that encounter, can you imagine? All of that experience, all of that visitation, an empowerment of the Holy Ghost. He decided to go out fishing. You see, many people, beloved, they have departed. And some are still departing, even right now as I speak, from the assignment given to them. And they prefer to do what they know best. <laughs> our Peter, our brother Peter, his own was fishing. What is your own? There is an anointing upon your life for greater works. There is an anointing that God wants you to display to your world. 
Ah, in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill that counsel of God. You will fulfill all that heaven has planned for your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. But God always has a better plan for you and I. You know, you know that is the truth. God always has what? A better plan for you and for me. Ah, but I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not frustrate the grace of God upon your life. Ah, I will not frustrate the grace of God upon my life. Ah, I will not frustrate the anointing of the Almighty God upon my life. You will not frustrate the anointing of the Almighty God upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I declare, I, I will fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Before my time is up, I will fulfill the purpose of God for my life. What about you? I pray the same for you. Beloved, brother, sister, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, before your time is up, heaven will know that you have fulfilled your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the truth is this. Following our own ways rather than the path that the Lord has assigned for us, what does it do? It causes us to be frustrated. May your life not be frustrated in Jesus' name. If you look at that scripture, you will see that brother Peter, he caught nothing. Despite the fact that he is experienced, he is a skilled fisherman. He is a skilled fisherman. He knows the seasons. He knows where the fishes are. But the Bible says he caught nothing. It will always lead to frustration. Anytime a man departs from the way that the Almighty God has set for them, they always end up frustrated. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your life will not be frustrated in Jesus' name. Following our own plans, following your own plans, rather than the plans of the Almighty God, it leads to what? It leads to regret and it leads to loss. <laughs> you see a lot of people, they say, I have wasted my years, I have wasted my time. Some of us feel like that because nobody told us on time. Nobody helped us on time to realize. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. My own life, your own life will not be of regret. It will not be of disappointment. Your children's life, your generation's life will not be of disappointment. It will not be of regret in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, let me read that scripture to you. John chapter 21. Please, let's go into it because I'm going to mention some, some things there. John chapter 21. Look at from verse 15. I'm going to read from verse 15 all the way to verse number uh, 17. Look, the Bible says there, so when they had dined, pay attention to that. When they had dined, I pay attention to every word of God. After they have dined, you know, that is his desire, the desire of Peter. Remember, Peter said, I go fishing after his own belly. He is hungry. He, he went after his skill, after what he knows best. The Bible says, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Verse 16. He said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. I love verse 17. Now, he's changing from lamb, feed my lamb, to feed my sheep. Now, if you pay attention to verse number 17. Now, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, he called him by his name, by his father's name, so that he knows that God knows you. He knows you very well. He says, lovest thou me? God was asking him. And so the Lord is asking you and I today, do you love me? He says, lovest thou me? And this time, Peter was grieved. The Bible says, and Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. What are you doing, beloved? That proves to God, the Almighty, that you love him. What am I doing? What am I doing on my daily basis on this earth? In my own household, in my own family, in my own life. To show to the almighty God that I love him. You know, there is a responsibility that aligns with love. You know, that responsibility is called action. It is called what? Action. You know, I said this about faith as well. When you are talking about faith, you are talking about God, you are talking about love. 
If you love me, there must be an action. If your husband or your wife says, Darling, I love you. But the action is showing the opposite way. You will doubt it. Because you can measure love by the act of the person. In the same way, you can see the faith of a person by their love for you. Are you with me? If you agree with me, say amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. You can measure the love a person has for you by the way they act. By the way they show their obedience. If it's a higher person. Or by the way that they show that they are pleasing to that person. They will do things that are pleasing to you. That is how you demonstrate love to somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, watch this. You see, we are warned in the Bible, pay attention, we are warned in the Bible that in the last days, men and women, people, Christians, believers, will become lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. So we must make extra effort, hallelujah, to humble ourselves before God, to love him more on a daily basis by our actions, by our obedience, by our faith in him, and by our pleasing, being pleasing unto the Lord. Let me show you a scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. The Bible says there, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And then it says in verse 3, without natural affection, there will be truth breakers, there will be false accusers. Have you not seen them around? Hmm. Hallelujah. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Have you not seen that everywhere around you? Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And you see this rising on a daily basis. When these are the character that you're exhibiting, you cannot show, you cannot tell me that you love God. He says, they will be traitors. They will be heady, false accusers, disobedient to parents. They will be proud. They will be covetous. They will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now, remember that Brother Peter, Jesus was asking Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times. Remember that brother Peter, this brother Peter that we are talking, this apostle Peter that we are talking about, he had shown Jesus Christ, you know, his love. When he pulled out his knife and sliced up the ears of the servant of the high priest, you remember? That is in John chapter 18. You see that around 9, 10, 11. Where he pulled out the sword when he came to interrogate Jesus. And in defense to show his loyalty, to Jesus, he put down the sword and said, I am with Jesus. Hallelujah. When your obedience is tested, when your, when your, when, when your faith in, in God is tested, you will stand firm in Jesus' name. Even the enemy will know that God is on your side. Even the enemy will know that God is on my side in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they take your name to, by day, by noon, and by night, all those that want to destroy your life, all those that have gathered to destroy you in this year, all those that say you will die before your time, in the mighty name of Jesus, let God arise and let all your enemies be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm speaking for somebody this morning, this hour. Whatever the accusation against you, my God will arise on your behalf. The Almighty God, the ancient of days, the Almighty, He will arise on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. All your false accusers, all those that are fierce against you, they will be disgraced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says that many will be lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. That is, there will be sensual pleasures, you know, sensual things, you know, things that give you amusements. You know, the word of God has said somewhere in the Bible that their belly, their God is their belly. You know, you cannot say you are a lover of God, beloved, when your belly and the things of this world have a higher priority, have a higher place. You know, in your life, more than you loving God and showing God that you love Him. Look at what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 
and verse 19. The word of God says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 19. It says, whose end, <laughs> I love this, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. I pray for you, beloved, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will not be destroyed. The enemy will not destroy you. They will not destroy your foundation. They will not destroy your generation. The Almighty God will shield you with a cloud of His glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing shall die in your hand this year. Nothing good shall die in your hand this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Because as to show the Almighty God your love, the Almighty God will shield you. He will protect you. He will send His angels to stand guard around you and fight. No man will draw his sword, but the angels of God. They will draw out the sword of flaming fire against your adversaries in the mighty name of Jesus. And your life shall glorify the Almighty God. Can I hear your amen in Jesus' name? Amen. Now, what am I trying to say? This was the case of Peter. He was after his belly. You know, and the Bible has said the same thing. The Bible is teaching you. The Bible, the word of God is teaching me. This can be our case too. And so we have to learn. I have often said this. You see the man that fell in the pit. It is for your example. You see the man that fell in the pit. And is drowning. It is for your example. It's for you to take heed. It's for you to take care. So that you yourself don't fall into the same pit. I said it to you before. That... David, a guy, a young man that was just rearing sheep and goats and animals in the bush, was placed in the king's palace so that he can see that King Saul has messed up. So that when he becomes king, he will not mess up. Because God said, I have rejected him. Ha, may the Almighty God not reject you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say, may the Almighty God not reject your household. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the good news is this. You see, while Peter went fishing, he forgot about the assignment. You know, and the Lord showed him, you know, that don't worry. This thing that you're looking for, I will give it to you. That's why the scripture began that he dined. The Bible says that Jesus, he dined with him when it says in verse 15. So when they had dined, so the thing that you are rushing for, Jesus will give it to you. Can I hear you? Amen. Jesus will give it to you. Amen. Jesus gave him his heart desire. And that is after God has given him. Because there are some of us, if God doesn't give you your heart desire, you will not even serve God anymore. God knows you. Brother Peter, Jesus had to give him his heart desire because he left the assignment. He left the anointing. He would have frustrated the anointing because he, goes, he went fishing. But Jesus came back to him, gave him the fish. The Bible says, after they had dined. You see, the good news that I see in all of this is that the Bible tells me that all these things will be added to you in abundance as you love the Almighty God, as you show love to the Almighty God. Lava, supra, la handu. Everything will be added to you. Everything will be added to you in the name of Jesus. The plan of God is for you. As long as you obey the assignment that he has placed in your hand, you will flourish, you will prosper in Jesus' name. Now, let me show you this scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Uh, look at verse 1 and 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Look at what the Almighty God is saying to you and to me. The Bible says there, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exalt you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Let me stop there. So the Bible is saying that, Paul is reminding the people, he's saying, look, I have given you the method that if you follow God, if you walk with God, if you walk with God, if you please the Almighty God by showing Him that you love Him, He says, you will abound more and more. 
This is the simple commandment. That's what it says in verse 2 that we gave you by the Lord Jesus. You want to abound? Then walk with the Lord. You want to abound? You want to flourish? You want to prosper? Then be pleasing unto the Lord. Love your magic God with all your heart. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, God will cause me to abound. I say God will cause you to abound more in the mighty name of Jesus. What do I mean by that? That means God Almighty will cause you to increase above where you are at the moment. God has the power to do that. <laughs> he will cause you, the Almighty God, He will cause you, that's what the Bible says there, He will cause you to abound. The Almighty God says, I will cause you to abound more. He will cause you to excel and prosper. He will cause you to prosper above all your expectations in ways that you will know that this is the Lord's doing. And it will be marvelous in your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. If you want marvelous things to happen in your life, try and love the Lord. Show Him that you love Him. If you want miraculous things to happen in your heart, you must first of all be a lover of God. You must first of all show him you love him by your action, by your obedience, and by the things you do to please him. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, the, the Bible says if a man be in Christ, it says he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Can you say that is your experience? If you are a new creature, are you new every day? So for you to be new, that means you cannot be laying old foundations. Let me go like this. If you, if you are a new creature, that means you are departing from who you used to be. You are once a thief. You are departing from it. You don't steal anymore. You are once a killer, an accuser. You are once a, a, a proud person, very prideful. You are, you are a, a backbiter. That means you are no longer laying those old foundations again. Rather, you are moving towards perfection. The Bible says that. We should move towards perfection. This is the way you please the Lord. You are striving by the Spirit of the Lord, by the anointing. Because the Holy Spirit resides in you, He is your best friend. He is your paraclete. He is your advocate. He is your helper. He is the one that helps you to move towards perfection. Let me put it this way. He is the one that helps me to move towards perfection. As I give Him the room, as I submit to Him, as I humble myself, he helps me to be pleasing unto the Almighty God. Let me show you Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 1. You, it, it is there. Hebrews chapter 6. Some people have never seen this before. They say, how can I be perfect? The Bible has said, be ye perfect. Even as your heavenly father is, be, say, be ye holy. Even as your heavenly father is holy. So we are expected to move towards perfection. Now look at Hebrews chapter 6. And verse 1, it says, let us go on unto what? Perfection. Let us go forth unto what? Perfection. Not lean again. There are certain things we are not expected to lay again. Praise the Lord. He says, don't lay again those foundations of dead works. Uh, you know, repentance. Uh, you know, every day you are repenting, you are repenting. Move in your faith towards God every day. Strive to move in your faith towards God. Can I hear your amen? Now, God is asking. You see, God is a practical God. He's saying, do you love me? You know, if you want the favor of God, if you want the favor of the king, if you want favor with men and with the women, and you do not have love, it will be difficult. Because all things work by love. Why do I say that? Love attracts. You think about it this way. If you see a lovely lady that you like, or you see a nice, a handsome man that you admire, what do you do? You smile towards the person and you say, oh, you look beautiful. You say with a good smile, oh, you look beautiful. And the person, if they are single, searching, and available, and they want to mingle, they too, they will respond in the same manner with a smile. You see, love attracts. When you give love, you attract love back. You see, a lot of people, they are single today. They are seeking. They are searching. They want to mingle. They want to marry. But they, they cannot express love. It will be difficult. 
<laughs> Hello. Because God himself is love. Love attracts naturally. Love is caring. Love is selfless. Love considers others while considering themselves. The person you are speaking to, they will assess you quickly. If you are speaking to a lady, you are chatting the lady up. Oh, sister, you are beautiful. And your face is high. Sister, you are beautiful. Well, how do you think they will respond to you? And you say the same thing, sister, you are beautiful. How do you think they will respond? Because love is caring. People will read it. They will read you. They will make the deduction easily. They will make that assessment. They will analyze you and say, this one, this one is not serious. You see, because love is selfless. Love is, it, it considers other people. Love shares. Love gives. Love cares. Look at what the Bible says in Mark chapter number 12. Jesus told us here. He, that's where he told us in that Mark chapter 12, verse 13. He says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You want to mingle, you want to marry, you want to, you know, uh, you know, be engaged, you see somebody you admire. You should love the Lord with all your heart. It is with all your heart. Be prepared in your mind first that I'm willing to give myself for you, to care for you. I'm willing to show my love for you. I'm willing to, 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 to share with you. If you are not ready to share, don't tell somebody you love them, you want to marry. Because you have to share everything. You know, two of you, they have become one when they join you together. You become one. If you don't want to share your things, if you are that kind of person, you like your fabulous, you like my thing, here, your thing there. <laughs> my brother, go and pray first of all. My sister, go and pray first of all. Ask God to deliver you from that selfishness. Because that is not love. You must have love in yourself. Let me carry on. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment that Jesus says. And the second is likewise. It's the same one, which is what? That thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, the way you love yourself, <laughs> is the way you are expected to love your neighbor. Amen. You love yourself. You, you want to enjoy life. The person you want to love must also uh, you know, be in the same capacity as well. Now, if you look in that John 21, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? How many times have you called your neighbor beloved? How many times have you called your own brother or your own sister? You know, to find out whether they are biological or spiritual brothers or sisters, how many times have you reached out to find out how they are doing, to find out how they are coping with the lockdown, with the employment, with finances? Eh? How many people have you blessed, have you helped in this lockdown season? Have you reached out to anybody, any family to find out how they are faring? How, or, or to find out how are they coping? The truth of the matter is this. I know many of us are self-sufficient. Things are okay in your life. Praise God. Things are okay in your own world. Praise God. You know, you are, you are carried away by your own ambition, by your own vision. You know, you, you are carried away by your own desire to stay healthy. You are working hard to put food on your own table uh, and, to, and, to, and to build wealth for yourself. I get it. But we are also called. Otherwise, Jesus will not be asking Peter, do you love me? Because Peter was minding his business, doing what he knows best, going a fishing. He was a fisherman, a skilled fisherman. He went to do what he liked, you know. But you know, one of the things I consider is, you see, the almighty God himself, he will be on fear or it will be on fear of the almighty God to demand or ask of you to love him. If he does not love you first, let me say that again slowly. I say, the Almighty God, as great as mighty as He is, He, he, he will be an unfair God. He will be uh, 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 an unjust God to demand of you and I to love Him if He doesn't first of all love me back, love me first of all. <laughs> What do I mean by that? Pastor, what do you mean? You see, if you think about it, God showed us his love in diverse ways. You will agree with me. The Almighty God has shown you and I his love in diverse ways. He demonstrated his love to mankind in several ways. How do I know that? The Bible says God made us in his own image. 
He did not make you in the image of a monkey. He did not make you in the image of an ant that men and other bigger animals would be trampling upon. He made you. He made me in his own image. Father, I am grateful to you. I look like God. When you see me, Jesus told the people, if you have seen me, you have seen God. If you have seen me, you have seen the grace of the Almighty God. For someone like me to be preaching, it can only be grace. There are many people on the pulpit today that if you search their past, even you will say, no, 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 it can only be God. There are men of God that you know today, they are still in that process. You know, it is God that placed them there. God is working on them. May the Almighty God perfect all that he has begun in your life to showcase you to your world in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, God, the Bible says, if you look in John 3, 16 as well, the Almighty God, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave. He loved the world he gave. So like I said, it will be unfair of God to demand of you to love him if he does not love you first. Now look at Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus. Jesus Christ is today glorified in heaven. Jesus Christ today is exalted, the Bible says, and given a name. That is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things underneath the earth. Now, Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God Almighty. Why? What qualifies him? The Bible says he demonstrated his love for God. You know, look at what the Bible says in Philippians chapter number 2. I'm ranging up very soon. Philippians chapter number 2. Look at verse 8. The Bible says, and be found. You see, this is what he did. He humbled himself. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient unto death even the death of the cross. So Jesus Christ, he showed that he loved God by his obedience. He humbled himself. Don't forget, the Bible says he, was, he is co-equal with God. The Bible says he is the word of God. Jesus, this Jesus that we are talking about, he had everything in heaven. All the angels, all the hosts of heaven, the four and the twenty elders of heaven, the four beasts in heaven, the thousands and the thousands and the thousands of angels, all bow down to worship him. And he sat down at the right hand side of God the Father. Yet, he decided to humble himself and obey the Father. And that is why he was glorified and given a name that here on earth whenever you call upon that name male heso paro deli maru hada whenever you call upon the name of jesus le caro zoku parada Every knee must bow, every power, whether they are principalities, whether they are thrones, whether they are altars, whether they are dominion, whether they are witchcraft spirits, whatever power in the waters and the heavens, in the seas, on the ground, in the graveyard, wherever the powers may be, they must bow to the name of Jesus. They must bow. Ah, I said they will bow. Every power tormenting you must bow to your God. They must bow to the name of Jesus. Can I hear your amen? Every power frustrating your destiny, they must bow to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Jesus had everything. He had everything. And yet, he humbled himself. Now, the Lord is asking you and I the question right now. God loves the world. He gave. He made us in his image. Jesus Christ, he humbled himself. He had everything and he was glorified. He was exalted. The same thing is being asked of you, beloved. God is asking you and I right now. He's asking, who shall I send? Who will go for us? Are you ready to go for God? Are you ready to act? Are you ready to obey the Almighty God? That's what the Bible says in Isaiah. He had the voice. He said, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah chapter 6, uh, I think it's verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6. Verse 8. Now think about these things, beloved. How can you say, or how can I say, I love God if you cannot obey God? You read the word of God, you hear the word of God, you receive instructions every day, and yet you do not obey. How can you say you love God? How can you say you are a lover of God? You know, a God that you cannot see when you do not love your own brother or your own sister that you see every day. 
They repulse you. They, they make you angry. Nothing touches you about them. You see them. They're in tears. Nothing touches you. Many Christian brothers, many Christian sisters, they are crying around you just for a little love and attention. But we ignore them and then we say we are a lover of God. That's what they are expecting from you, just a little care, just a little attention, just a little concern, just to pray for them. Some of us don't even know our brothers and our sisters. You don't know where they live. You don't, the ones that are in your fellowship, in your own close fellowship. No, I'm not talking about, talking about the church that is 50,000 or 1,000, or 500, or 200, or 100. A child that is 50, you don't know everybody there. What about the child that is 10, your fellowship? You don't know their houses. You don't even call them. What kind of, how can you say you love God? Hmm? If you cannot reach out to your own brother, to your own sisters around you, and feel the pain, or know the pain that they are going through, or the struggles that they are going through, or they are dealing with, and offer assistance in your own way. Even if you don't have the resource to do, why don't you show some care or pray with them? How can you then say that you love God? If the thoughts of your own neighbor does not cross your mind, nothing concerns you. You know, you simply because you are too self-conceited, you are you are too focused on your own belly. How can you say you are a lover of the Almighty God? How can you say that? How can you say you truly love God? You know, how can you say you are a lover of God, my brother, my sister? How many times have you visited or prayed for that family? That Christian brother that you know is sick. You know, it's not that you didn't know. How many times have you visited them in hospital or called their family when they are under affliction? You don't see them because you are too far. You are focused on me, myself, I. My family, <laughs> that is all. You don't feel you have a duty to call them. You don't feel the need to reach out to anybody, you, you know, your, or to, to their source of comfort because your own concern is too heavy. How can you then be a source of comfort to that family or to that person and then say again you love God? Again in John 21, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He said, feed my sheep. You see, the love that Jesus was talking there is agape love. Agape love. It's, it follows a law. Agape love. The one that is unconditional. Agape love. It's not like filio. Filio is the one you have for a friend. Agape love sees beyond. You see, even when there's some people you know they don't like, you reach out to them. You know some people are weaker, still reach out to them. It is agape love. But be mindful. Let the Lord lead you. Be wise. Hallelujah to Jesus. Again, Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? You know, before you start feeding, he said, feed my sheep. <laughs> before you start feeding the sheep, you must first of all find them. <laughs> you must find the sheep and bring them into a safe or a saved fold for the Lord Jesus Christ. If the people around you are not saved and you are not concerned, then how can you say you love God? He said, we have opportunities round about us to make God happy every day, beloved. We have opportunities around you. God has placed you in that position. <laughs> Some of us, God cannot trust you with a higher level because he knows that it, you will focus your attention on it. You will not see other people. You will not see other things. If God promotes you today, you will not come to church again. If God buys you a car, you will only drive yourself on holidays. All about yourself. If God builds a house for you, you cannot invite people to come into your home. You cannot use your home for house fellowship. That is why even the prayer of some righteous people, you know, God is delaying it. Because if he gives it to you, you will forget God. You will forsake God. You will run after those things. Hallelujah to Jesus. We have opportunities all around us, left and right. We have reasons to draw men into the kingdom and point them to Jesus. And as you do so, Jesus is your rewarder. Hallelujah to Jesus. We demonstrate that love in the same way that Jesus Christ demonstrated this. Call somebody you have not called for a while. Reach out to those people you know. Just call them randomly. You will see, they say, eh? <laughs> you are calling me. You will see the joy to bring to their heart. Call somebody new today. Reach out to somebody. Invite somebody to your home when the lockdown is over. Yeah? When you love social distancing. Yeah? Call somebody on the phone. You can still call them on the phone. Even if you don't want to see them, you can hide behind the phone. <laughs> yeah, sister, I just wanted to call you. You can't see their face. You call them. After all, you don't want to visit them. Call them on the phone. 
<laughs> at least they can't see you. They are not going to use the season to break the ice, to break that barrier. Don't build up walls against uh, people or families. Pull down that wall, use the phone. This is the season. We are in a good position. Uh, some people, they find it hard. And I ask people, why do you find it hard to love other people? Are you struggling in yourself, my brother and my sister, to love, even to love yourself? Have you been disappointed or have you been repaid evil for your good before? I am encouraging you. Don't stop loving. Rather, embrace Jesus. Embrace the love of God. He will never leave, uh, leave you. He will never allow the enemy to mock you. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I will say this. Do not repay people evil with evil. Let God fight for you. I know what I'm talking about. Let God fight for you. The Bible says, move towards perfection. Perfection is loving. Perfection is obeying and serving God wholeheartedly. When God becomes your number one, you show him that you love him. And when you show him that you love him, he fights your battle for you. The Almighty God will fight your battle. The Almighty God will elevate you. The Almighty God will promote you. The Almighty God will build this hedge of fire around you. The Almighty God will not permit the enemy to prevail over you. The Almighty God will not permit the rod of the wicked to rest upon the lot of the righteous in the mighty name of Jesus. This week you will prosper. This new month yeah, you are entering into to be a blessed week for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, this new month of March that you are entering into, you are marching forward. You are flying higher. Things will begin to work for you. You will break forth to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. Men will gather to celebrate you. The people that have ignored you before, that have abandoned you before, the Almighty God will bring you to their remembrance and they will love you in Jesus' name. Do you love Jesus? God bless you in Jesus' name. Don't forget, God has not abandoned you. Don't abandon the Lord. God has not forsaken you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this is the time to accept him. Just tell him you love him. Tell him to forgive you your sins. Ask him to come into your life and he will save your soul. God bless you. Have a very blessed week. And this week will be a glorious one for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I say God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great, great, great new month. Have a blessed, blessed new month. May your lovers, your helpers, locate you this new month in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Go on and prosper. Go on and succeed. Go on and be all that God has ordained you to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name.